Compact system cameras have become really popular. They're small, compact and lightweight, yet lose nothing on image quality. The Lee 75 filter system has been designed specifically for these cameras. It's lightweight, easy to use and has all the benefits of the Lee 100mm system but in a smaller size. In this video I'll be showing you how easy it is to use the 75 system in a busy city environment. Here we are in the heart of the city of London. We're shooting handheld without tripods. We're trying to keep the freedom to capture the hustle and bustle of the city. We're using a small camera, the Olympus OMD, perfect this environment, uh, much easier to use than a, a bigger digital SLR. The perfect accessory for this type of camera is the Lee 75 system. We have a smaller adapter rings available for each of the different lenses we use. So different millimetres of size. This one's a 46mm. It screws on nicely onto the front of the lens. We then add on the clip-on holder, which just snaps perfectly into place. Okay, this first location is a brilliant urban scene. We've got loads of colour, we've got this bright yellow boarding, with the lighting on it, it's going to make a great foreground, and we've got graffiti in the background with the interesting tube trains on top. So we're first going to do the shot without a filter, just see what the effect we get and how the range of contrast is. We're shooting on aperture priority, so we can choose the aperture, and I've got an aperture of about f8 to maximise depth of field. So what we're going to do, we've got the camera on matrix metering and we're going to take a reading for the yellow background here and then we can recompose the shot and see what we get. Now we can see from the LCD monitor that the sky is blown out and we've lost all detail in there because the contrast is just too much. I can see also that from experience that that's going to be about a two-stop ND grad that we need to add there to balance the two together. So we'll slide the two-stop into the first holder and we'll put the camera up to our eye and we can adjust that. Now I'm going for a slightly jolty angle so I'll twist the holder and then place the grad so it covers the sky and I can see through the viewfinder the exact place where to put it. And I can now, take a meter reading again, recompose, take the shot. Looking at the result. Yep, looking at that shot now. It's much improved. The sky's not blown out anymore. We've got detail in the clouds, and both the sky and the yellow boardings are nicely balanced for a good shot. We're happy with that. Okay, now we come to the other side of the tube trains. This is a favourite location of mine. We can see the tube trains directly on now, and we've also got some more writing and graffiti on the wall, which makes a great shot. So we'll take our first shot again without a field and see what we get. Again, it's a nice shot, but the sky is totally blown out. It's far too bright, and we need another filter to help balance it out with the wall in the foreground. So what we're going to do, we're going to go for a two-stop ND grad, hard grad, because there's not much poking into the sky and breaking the horizon. We'll place that in, and then take the shot again, adjusting the grad. That's looking much better now. The sky is now balanced with the foreground and we haven't lost the detail in the clouds and it's making a really nice shot. However, we can go one step further. I only want to capture some movement in this shot. So what we're going to do, we're going to add some traffic in. I mean, what we need, a nice colourful taxi passing. But to blur the traffic, we're going to have to add another filter. So we'll move the ND grad to the, to the outer slot. A free stop ND standard. 
We'll place that in the first slot. And what this will enable us to do is to bring the shutter speed down. Our initial shutter speed was 1 250th of a second. We want to juice that so that we can blur the traffic. So the ND standard will allow us to bring the shutter speed down to hopefully around a 30th of a second. So with that in place and the grad still in place, we'll recompose a shot, but we'll get down lower so we can bring the, the road into shot and add some movement to the traffic. Yes, that's much better. We get all the drama of the backgrounds and the tube trains, but now we've got the movement of the traffic into the shop, making a much more dynamic shop. Okay, here we are at our next location and we're photographing this famous street art. The trouble is here, the left-hand side of the frame is burning out because of the extra brightness. So to compensate for this, we're going to use a 0.6 ND soft grad on the left-hand side of the frame, positioned vertically in the holder. Now as we see with the filter in place, we're retaining the detail in the sky and the building and it's producing a much better shot. One thing I have noticed, however, is that we're still getting a lot of glare off the windows from the building on the left-hand side. This is reducing the contrast, and so we could use a polarizer here to cut out that glare. The beauty of the 7.5 system is the way the polarizer clips so easily onto the front of the holder. As we can see, with the polarizer in place, it's cutting out all the glare from the windows, as well as increasing saturation in the scene. The temptation is to go for the obvious view. However, I like to get off the beaten track and some of my best shots have been taken on back streets away from the main drag. What I like about this scene is a mix of character with the graffiti, the ornate lamppost, and if we time it correctly, a splash of color and movement from the traffic at the end of the lane. As we can see in the initial shot, the sky again is burning out. So we need to add a 0.9 ND soft grad to add the detail back in. So that's successfully balanced the sky. But what I'd like to do now is add movement and colour with a slow shutter speed and capture a passing red bus. By using a 0.9 ND standard, we can keep the same aperture yet slow the shutter speed down and create a nice blurred effect. We're now going for a different technique. We're going from hand holding and we're going to put the camera on the tripod. This is because we're going to go for a long exposure shot. We've got some great modern buildings up here on the edge of the city and with the clouds moving across in the sky it's going to have the drama, the movement on the long exposure contrasted with the modern buildings. So we've set the camera up on the tripod nice and steady. Just a few adjustments for the camera. We need to set it on full manual exposure so that we can take full control of that. We're also setting the autofocus to manual as well. With that set up, we'll add a grad so we can balance that brighter sky with the detail in the buildings because we want to keep that. So we'll slot in a 0.9 ND grad. We'll put that in the outer slot, carefully slide that in and we can check on the screen the alignment of that so it's perfectly placed. Once we've done that, we can then add the 10 stop big stopper. Slide that into the first slot. It's important to do that to make sure the gasket seals all light leaks coming in on the filter holder. We can see from our initial test shot, the exposure was 1 30th of a second at f9. If we look at the reference card, 
One thirtieth of a second translates to 30 seconds with a big stopper in place. With the camera on manual and in bold mode, we can now take the shot using the cable release so we don't knock the camera at all and hold the shutter open for that 30 seconds to make the exposure. That's much better. We've got loads of movement in the cloud that's drifting across above in the sky and that contrasts nicely with the modern shape of the buildings. Shooting urban landscapes in this way with small cameras and a compact filter system gives a great deal of freedom and flexibility. So don't be afraid to get out there and give it a go yourself. Thank you.